Hello Capricorn with a reading specifically for the sign of Capricorn. So this reading could resonate with anyone who has Capricorn strongly in their chart. Um, I am doing a, a different spread type. I call it free form and I'll put energies down on the table and then I'll dig into those energies. We will be looking out the next seven to ten days or the next two weeks. In the extended reading, I'll go out several months into the into the future to check in on those energies and see what we can find with them. Um, and I'll also be looking at the people, the specific people who are around you and their perspective of, of your energy, Capricorn energy. All right, so that's the plan. Um, without further ado, my friends, let's get right into this and do start this free form free form kind of energy. It's something that I really love to do. And so I've decided just to do it, just to explore it, see what you guys think of it. I love it. And um, usually when we like to do something, it, it is a, uh, it has done well, isn't it? Or better than if we, if we, I don't know. I just, I just enjoying the change up. I'm just enjoying, there you are Capricorn. Boom. There you are. Okay, I'm done talking now. Now, this is like this, wasn't it? This is what I mean. This is going to be a free-form reading. I'm going to be digging into these energies, digging into rabbit holes here to see what we can uncover in this energy. A little bit different than I've done before. Those of you who buy the extended readings have seen me do this, so you know um, what I do. All right, so here is, this is what we have. This is what we're going to start with here. Let me get the table so the tripod doesn't bounce so much. Let's look to see what's here. Ah, that judgment energy. Yeah, okay. All right, Capricorn. So um, I, I'm going to go over these ener these energies in a general way, and then once I do that, we can dig into them, um, dig deeper in them, and see what we can find. Um, we have you here in the Queen of Pentacles. Now, this is a feminine energy. We know that most of my listeners are um, do have a feminine energy, although not everyone. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. Um, when you're in the Queen of Pentacles energy, you are. Um, an energy that is steady, hardworking. It's an energy that sees the details in life. So um, it, whether you're doing this for work or you're doing this in your own life, you're able to really zoom in, um, zoom quite far in and see what is necessary to be seen. So you might have a harder time seeing the big picture of, of something, but um, feel much more comfortable um, living within a certain structure, like having a list of something very specific. So when you're in the Queen of Pentacles energy, um, you might be working on a project or you might be quite interested in a certain aspect of life, a certain quality of life, and you could be living very directly within that. So you could have a lot of things going around you, but for some reason you're involving yourself or you're, you're, um, you are focused on something very specific. You could also be looking at money. You could be looking at numbers. Uh, you could be focusing on putting one step in front of the other. You could be overcoming anxiety, um, working hard, um, pushing through. That's what the Queen of Pentacles does. She pushes through. She makes it work. Um, she finds success in her methods and her strategies. Um, she is the backbone, right? So this is a very much of a backbone kind of energy that we have here with the Queen of Pentacles. Um, she's reliable. She's responsible. She's there day after day. And this, this takes a great amount of energy. I always think uh, when I'm in the Queen of Pentacles, I always have a great amount of respect for the Queen of Pentacles. Um, and, and I even have Capricorn as a moon sign. So, I, I mean, me being Aquarius mostly, you know, that moon sign, you know, being in Capricorn, it, it does slow me down a bit. Um, so I understand how if you have a Capricorn sun or even a Capricorn rising or any strong Capricorn in your chart, uh, the steadiness that you have, the hard work that you put into something, um, the dedication that you have to a cause or to a, a problem, uh, solving a problem. It is something that I really respect because I feel it. I um, mean, this sounds kind of silly. Now I'm giggling to myself. <laughs> that was a fake one and then it turned into a real one. <laughs> um, 
And I know this sounds funny, but I, I can feel the Capricorn in myself. And when I really get into that energy, it's something that I respect about myself. And uh, it's it, this is me confronting the ego here. Here are you seeing me in an ego moment, a moment and laughing at myself. Because really, um, the, the, the earth energies sometimes have to deal with the ego, just like the wand energies do. And all the energies in the, in the, in all of the world have ego. And there's something here about ego that's coming out and, and how we can enjoy ego. We don't always have to, to, to step on it. We don't always have to throw it in the trash can. We can acknowledge it. We can laugh about it and we can respect the ego. Um, especially when it comes to something that is talking about living in the detail, especially when there's a time right now that is bigger than us bigger and more powerful than us, something that's going on around us, and we're still able to be in the details. Um, Capricorn, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful capacity that you have. And um, I think it's something that you can pat yourself on, a, on the back for and say, I'm proud of myself that I'm able to do this. I'm proud of myself that I'm standing tall. I'm proud of myself that even though the wind can bend me and can bend my branches, I'm still standing strong. My roots are still very firmly planted in the earth and I'm able to continue ahead. And um, I know that um, I can I can depend on myself. I can rely on myself. And this is a quality within me that is um, something to be respected and to be commended. And that is the message that's coming forward to you um, through me. So it is a message that's coming through me, not necessarily from me, but through me, from my spiritual team, um, as it connects with your spiritual team. So please, um, if you have the desire to, if you have the willingness to, I invite you to consider that this is a message to you from you as you receive this. Uh, we do have you sitting here um, with the nine of wands in lateral. So there's something here that you're working through, something here that you're working through that has to do with action. It has to do with something that you're wanting to do or that you're trying to do. Um, it, it's something that is somewhat difficult to process. It's Okay, let me step into the, I'm in this energy now. Now, the nine of wands energy in the lateral. Let me get into this energy just a second here. It's an energy that will keep you somewhat still because you're absorbing, uh, you're absorbing the qualities of the energy that's within it. What do we mean by that? That's somewhat vague. Um, there, there's something here that you, you, that you might have to, go up against okay there's something here that you might have to go up against either a person that you might have to go up against a system that you might have to go up against a way of thinking it's something that you are feel that you are passionate about it could be something with your work or your family or your money or the resources that are around you it might involve your home because we're connecting it to the capricorn energy but it's something that you feel strongly about and you're trying to protect you're working to protect it um, you could have an energy of defensiveness around this there could be a little bit of fear around this um, but but i think where this is originating this nine of wands in the lateral in the in the horizontal i don't even know how to say it um, is is because you have been through journeys you have been through battles in your life and the point of journeys and the points of battles oftentimes are the lessons that we learn and the enlightenment that we receive um, and the wisdom that we gain for ourselves. And there's something so valuable in that. And, and you could even be questioning, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling this edginess? Um, I know that there's a way I can do this. I know there's a way that I can communicate this, um, but it, it's a push and a pull. All right. Um, I, I want to dig deeper, but I, I just have a feeling I need to keep going here. I'm going to keep the flow going. This is really pulling me in. So we're going to spend a little time digging into this energy here um, as well to see what we can pull out of this energy um, to get to the bottom of this, because this is some, some, this is energy that's, it's deeper. Um, we, then we have, I'm telling you, there's something here. So then we have the judgment energy. Now this is an energy that will change the situation. So there's a change coming in for this situation. Now the judgment energy is something that, um, is, is a, is again an, an energy that sometimes we like to gloss over. We like to just kind of step, step right over that energy. Um, this is a, 
Judgment energy is, is something that happens, whether it's something that you do or something that someone else does or something that spirit does or the universe does or, or whatever your belief system is. It, it's something that happens that clears up a situation. It cleanses a situation. And it, it's sometimes uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable for both parties. Um, it, because it, it, it brings it to the light. It brings a situation above ground. It brings it above board. And whatever is there, it, uh, is, is being opened up. So it's almost like you're uncovering something. You're uncovering something. And, and with the judgment energy, not one of us is perfect. We are not meant to be perfect. If we were perfect, there would be no reason for us to be here if we were perfect. Um, unless we, you know, let's not go down that road. But because we all have something to learn. We all have something to adjust in our walk, right? That's why we're here. So we can learn. We can expand. And there, sometimes with this judgment energy, there is um, information that comes through that changes the situation. And it usually impacts both energies in one way or another. Um, usually not one of us is exempt um, for, from some kind of a correction or from some kind of an adjustment in the way we think or in the way we do things. Um, so there's something here that we're going to dig deeper in to see what this is, because these two energies are definitely intertwined together. Um, let's see what's here. Um, we do have the hermit. So there is some deep deep digging that's going on here. There is some, it's a Virgo energy as well. So we have very grounded energies here, very grounded energies. So there's some deep digging um, that's happening here with the hermit where you're really taking a situation and, and this, this energy, I can't hardly wait to go in it, but there's something here that you are trying to understand. I think you're being very reasonable about it. That's probably why this is lateral. You're understanding it's something that's probably within you. It's something that's in your outer environment. You're understanding that it's probably something that's complicated and that goes very deeply within you. That's why the hermit is here. And when, when the hermit's here, especially with the Queen of Pentacles, I think there's a real intention with this group of Capricorns, a real um, willingness to look at a situation and find where your place is in it. Um, see what's going on around you, see what's going on within you, and then um, really looking at the situation to how it can be improved, how the future can be improved, how the system can be improved, how you can improve something within yourself. And I think it's done with compassion and kindness because the hermit, which is a very Virgo-ish energy, is very, it's a very compassionate and kind energy, um, the hermit is. And so um, this energy is not going to... Um, punish. This energy is not going to flog, if you want to say that word. Um, it is going to bring an answer. It is going to bring a pathway. And that is in itself is somewhat of a celebration. That's why we have the judgment here. Because whenever we have a cleansing, no matter how much it stings or ma no matter how much, how many changes come in from it, it does feel good. And it is something to be celebrated because it be brings something uh, that will create change and will create something that will be much more abundant or more loving or more sincere or whatever it is of this situation that you're that you're dealing with, whether it's a romantic situation that you're dealing with or something with a child, or maybe it's with a business that you own or a job that you have, or what, whether it's with finances or whatever the situation is, um, it can, it can, this energy can be, a, a, you know, set upon almost any kind of a situation. Those of you that are going through something like this, you're resonating with this in many, many different ways. That's how come tarot, the tool of tarot is such a beautiful um, tool once you once you understand how to really comprehend the messages that come forward from it. So let's go ahead and start digging into this, this energy and see what we can find. Um, I would like to dig into the Queen of Pentacles and we are going to dig into the Hermit. But first, this is the elephant in the room that I really want to um, sit with. So I'm going to take these two energies, move them off to the side. They're just up here. They have not left in any way. Um, I almost, what do I want to do? Do I want to separate this? Let's separate them just for now. And let's dig into this nine of wands and see what's here. Tell me more about this nine of wands. 
And more about this Nine of Wands, please. Ace of Swords. Eight of Wands. There's a Four of Pentacles coming in like that. This energy, what is that? The Six of Cups. Maybe that's it. We usually like to work in threes for some reason. <laughs> I think that might be it. There's another one. All right, so let's see what we can find here with these energies. Well, we have we start we're starting off with the Ace of Swords. So um, I think that there's been some truth that has come forward with the Ace with the Ace of Swords, and whatever this truth is, or this evidence, or this factual information. I mean, once the Ace of Swords is here, it's happened. It's happened. So there's clarity around it. So the word it is now something that you can really put your mind around. You can wrap your mind around it. Well, whether you can wrap your mind around it or not is debatable because here you are trying to wrap your mind around it. But it is there to be connected with. So there's a communication that has come in that is now... Um, lessen the confusion for you or there is something that you're now realizing and there's clarity so there there's an answer here or a realization here or there's some truth here now look how this truth is connected in with the knight of wands so whatever this truth is it's kind of topsy turvy to you um you're not really quite sure how to handle this this situation this truth and um I think what it's doing with this death energy over the eight of wands is it could be, it could be adjusting or it could be, it could have stopped. It, you, you may not know really how to communicate about this. You may not know how to communicate about this. You may not know what to say because look, the death energy is right over the top of this. Usually this is a truth or this is a communication and look, it would flow so smoothly with the eight of wands. What is the Eight of Wands? A lot of times it's, it's about communication. It's about passionate communication, about excitement, and it's about the spreading of the of the energy within you. And sometimes when we communicate with other people, um, let's say that uh, I do this all the time, and, and many of you do because many of us are empaths or we understand empathic abilities. Um, and my I have a funny family. There's eight of us kids in our family, and we all grew up in a in in like um an interesting fundamental um suppressive kind of um culture um it's a little clump of a culture within a bigger world and we grew up within that little culture and we all we grew up with people that are very ethnic and and very much their own little and lived in their own little subculture or their own little sub world within the bigger world so um, we're all kind of anyway we, i don't know why i'm saying that but um we're we're a bunch we're we like each other and um, we're, we're learning how to accept each other. And um, we've all struggled with um, breaking up, breaking through the confines that um, the community um, ha placed upon us as, as very young people. And we're still struggling with that because we um, have, you know, trauma from that still, even as older people where we have sacrificed family and we, you know, sometimes these, these kind of subcultures can really create um, separation between people that is traumatic um, for families. And so we've really overcome a lot. But in that overcoming, we sure are quite interesting as people. And, and the rest of you are here listening. We're like, oh, yeah, I know what she means. I know about that. Um, you should see when I get together with my sister, how silly we are and how we regress into being right. So so when we get with our people, we can really kind of become how we used to be you know we can act silly and we can um, say ridiculous things and we can just be our total selves it's almost like our inner children come alive like when we're with the people um, that we feel so close with 
And so sometimes when we talk to those people, let's say if we're just, so I'm trying to explain what I'm trying to say here. Um, so today, for example, I was just really mellow. I was really tired. I had just gone shopping for my mother um, and I was tired. The grocery stores are tiring for me. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, okay, now I, 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 it's almost time for me to go and do the Capricorn reading. I thought maybe I just need to take a nap. I need to get my energy back. And all of a sudden my brother calls and he is an interesting person and we get talking and all of a sudden we're so excited and we're talking about all these things and, and I just take on his energy. And just five minutes ago, I thought I was very tired and I thought that I needed to rest. And I needed to listen to inspirational music and I needed to get myself into the flow. And here comes this phone call and here I am just super excited and talking with him and talking about what we think's going on and this and that. And we think we know everything and we're having this conversation. And I get off the phone and I realize what just happened? What just happened? That's kind of the energy that the eight of wands is. It's like you can talk to someone and you can get wrapped up. You can get caught up in the energy of that communication, right? Because these arrows have to land somewhere, right? These arrows of passion and excitement and chemistry and could be even sexuality here for some of you that are, this is, you're talking about a, a romantic relationship. It could even be that. Um, we can get, we can, we can, this energy is contagious. That's what I'm trying. There we go. Why does it have to be such a long story? I don't know. This energy can be contagious, right? But look what has fallen over the top is this death energy. So whatever has come forward, Capricorn, it could be causing you to really try to rethink, okay, how am I going to communicate this? How am I going to talk about this? How am I going to bring this forward? Because something has totally changed about this situation. Something has totally changed about this situation. Now, what's interesting is you have the four of pentacles in the reverse. So here you have the death energy, which is a huge transformation something that takes a situation and just puts it on its back or flips it to the other side. And, and then you have the four of pentacles here, which is an, is an odd energy combination. And that's probably why the reason is that you're on your side here with the nine of wands. You're not sure if you should be defending it, if you should be going along with it, if you should be just letting it ride and see what happens. I mean, I think you're not really sure if what you do, do you protect this? Do you, Dig into it. Do you communicate about it? Do you be quiet about it? What do you do about this truth that's come in? I think it's a questioning of sometimes when we have truths and evidence and, and um, realizations, they're big, they're important. But what do we do with that information? How do we communicate it? How do, you know, when you get such a burst of energy like this that comes through with the Ace of Swords, the body then needs to take action. Like there, there's, the energy that comes through you then has to move through you, doesn't it? Even if it comes through the mind, it's something there. It's like when you have a secret. When you learn a big secret, what do you do with that secret? Do you keep it inside and love that it's there? Well, my son can do that. Well, he's very much a Capricorn. I have a hard time with that. There's usually someone that I have to tell. <laughs> Maybe even my son, because he can keep things quiet <laughs> somehow. I don't know how he does that. So whatever this is, there's a truth that has come in and you're not sure how to respond. I think normally you would have went and said something or you would have returned that energy. Or you would have called somebody back and said, no way, I don't agree with that. No way. Or you could say, whatever, maybe you, you received a message that somebody did something towards you. And, and normally you would say, Hey, why did you do that? You know, that I don't like it. When, and now you're, there's something here that you're not sure what you're going to do or what you're going to say. <sighs> now there's an energy of the four of pentacles here. Now this is an energy that I'm going to dig into. So let's dig in deeper here and see what we can find. Four of pentacles in the reverse. There's some sort of letting go of a situation there's a letting go letting go of the energy here's a four of swords coming in in reverse and see my deck is all in the upright how can we have two fours in the reverse now how weird is that 
sometimes I think spirit just plays games with us in this. The world. Something here is being relaxed. Something here is being let go. And now it's like there's some sort of There is a new introspection, and it could even be something about a, a mass change, change of intention, change of the way you think, change of the way you feel about your personal connections. Maybe something that you that once gave you great comfort no longer means the same thing to you. It no longer means the same thing. You might have found a deeper way of connecting or a deeper way of resting or um, what once brought you this alignment, what once brought you a sense of togetherness or a sense of rest is now different than it used to be. And so there is a letting go of something that you once held to be dear or that you once held close to you. Um, it could be that what you once thought was your protection, what you once thought was um, the way to go that brought the most relief there's a change now coming in to that. I think this is a person who has undergone a great strengthening. This is a person who has undergone a great personal strengthening. And what was needed before to feel safe and to feel aligned this is a this is a group of people that feel much more brave now. Feel, uh, and I don't mean to say that that you weren't before, but I feel like there's a there's an advanced level of inner strength. There is a new foundation that is around you, that is a deeper sense of trust, a deeper sense of faith. Because this is a this is something new here that's coming in. Here is the death energy, and here is the world energy. Both moving in, this is in the upright. This is moving into the upright. Here we have these two fours that are in the negative. So there is definitely a letting go of something that you once felt safe with, the four of pentacles, and something that you once felt protected by and aligned by and connected to the universe by, connected to your higher power by. I think that there is a, a, um, a sense of strengthening within yourself. So somehow you have felt that your higher power, what you connect into, has a deeper connection within yourself. It is, it is now become a part of yourself. It is a part of yourself. Rather than having to reach up to it, or to reach out to it, or reach down to it, if you're connecting with the earth, it's something that is now a part of you, and you can connect in with, within yourself. You still have the need for the higher power and you still have that connection to it but it's more uh, uh, within yourself and that brings a strengthening something is this is a this is this is a group of people that are going through a shift of consciousness i i really don't know how else to say this and it has in you in a certain kind of energy that you're not quite sure how to move forward now i think you're kind of regrouping yourself after this understanding that's coming towards you here is the truth what you believe in and here is how you used to take action and what you used to say right with the eight of wands and what you used to do and here is the death sitting over the top of it there has been a major change and then we get these two four energies now what's on my deck let me show you this i just want to show you the 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 power of the the this this is spirit th this is a message coming through those of you that are resonating will feel this you will feel this within yourself that 
Look what's happened. Look at all these energies are all in the upright. There is not one. There is not one that is in the negative that's in the reverse in this deck. The, the, the fact that both of these energies have flipped out as four energies and are in the reverse. The fact that we have the death energy over the top of the Ace of Swords and the Eight of Wands and the world energy that has come out with the judgment energy here that we're going to go into in a minute is quite astounding to me. And this is why you're having trouble figuring out, okay, how do I respond to this? What actions do I take? What do I say? How do I say this? This will be fine. This is going to pass. Um, it's it's just in the shifting of the energies that has you a little bit discombobulated. But look how beautiful these energies are. I just want to remind you how beautiful these energies are and the work that it takes, the inner work that it takes to go through something like this. It's beautiful, Capricorn. It truly is. It's deep. This is this is this is why you have judgment and the hermit energy. Because this is something that goes very deep within you and it is creating a change within you. All right, let's let's dig into now the judgment energy. I have to make sure I'm putting them all in the upright when I do this now. All right. All right, so. Nine of Wands is, let's let's look into the Judgment Energy and see what we can get out of the Judgment Energy now. Tell us more about this Judgment Energy. Now these energies, there are, there's the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. These energies are, they can be a little bit more complicated. We'll see what we can find here to help you along your way. I think this is a shorter period of time. I think this is the next week or two that you're kind of moving through this energy. Here's the Eight of Wands. Remember how the Eight of Wands was at the bottom of the deck when I showed you? I mean, not Eight of Wands, Four of Wands. Here's the Eight of Swords flipping over, but not coming out. That's okay. You can stay in there, Eight of Swords. There's the Queen of Wands. All right. So we have it. Now here's an interesting. We have the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. We have the Four of Wands in the upright with the Queen of Wands in the upright. So this is a very strong energy that we're getting from you at this point connected with this judgment. So there is a lot of passion now. Um, starting with the Eight of Pentacles. I mean, this is really an un. This is will really a willingness to to take some time to allow your focus to spread a little bit farther. To allow your focus to, to widen. To see things differently than maybe you've seen them before. To work on things differently than maybe you've worked on them before. It's almost like the, the horizon. It's almost like if you're looking out of a ship, uh, the round circle of the ship, it's almost like that circle that you're looking out of the window that you're looking out of. It just got a lot bigger and you're able to see more. You're able to see farther. You're able to see more to the east and to the west. And it looks like that there are some working styles, work, the way you work, the way you focus, the way you keep to yourself or the way that you feel about your work. This is the right way. This is how I've always done it. This is what I need to do to be successful. This is what I need to do to be abundant. This is what is valuable to me. There's, there's something here. Now we have again two eights, one in the reverse and one in the upright. I think that there is, and look how this Eight of Cups touches a judgment. I think that there is an, a, a, an awareness within you that that path or that way doesn't have to be the way that you go. It's, it's a loosening. It's a loosening up of the restrictions that you place upon yourself. It's a loosening of those restrictions. So something has come in with this judgment energy and is loosening the restrictions. For example, how do you feel about your work? 
How do you feel it should be done? How do you feel? What do you feel about money and how do you spend it and how do you save it and, and what do you do with it? How do you feel about food? What do you eat and how do you eat it and where do you get it and, and how do you grow it and how do you buy it? There's a loosening. It's almost like there's a new enjoyment. There's an enjoyment in the expanded nature of it. And, and there, and somehow in the enjoyment, there is a, a loosening of the restriction and a, and a walking away of a certain, um, this is also ego work as well. This, this has to do with the transmutation of the ego, walking away of something that you really felt, um, very attached to in the past. Could even be rules that you've had or, or regulations that you were a part of. But there is a departure, a slight movement away from a certain way of being. And look what's happened here with the Page of Pentacles. There, there, there are indications now that there's success with this. Right? There's indications of success with the Page of Pentacles. Maybe you're receiving messages from, from people saying, this product is extraordinary. Or the service that you provided, we love that service. Right. Or Jody, this new structure that you have that you really enjoy. We love this kind of reading. It was super fun. Right. Or there is the ego again. But see, we, we, there is an enjoyment in it. There doesn't have to be, um, a continual degrade, degradation of it, but there can be an enjoyment of it as well. And that is a message that is coming out here because there is some indication that there are, there is success here with something. And this is quite exciting when I get into this energy. Look at the four of wands here. There's stability here. There is something here that actually you feel quite safe within. And the queen of wands is here. So you're not being really in this energy. You're, you're, you're allowed, you're, you are continuing to be your empowered self. So even though the Eight of Pentacles is here, and even though this Nine of Wands is here, it really hasn't changed the essence of who you are. It's this, this shelter, this, this stability, this work agreement, this engagement, this relationship, this structure around you that helps you feel safe as you move forward is still there. It's still there. It's fear. Fear. Okay. Little energy. I knew that. Look at all these cards that came out. The world energy. Now the world energy is in reverse. How does that happen? I really don't know. And we have the queen of swords energy coming out. Of, I mean, it's flipping over in the deck, but not really popping out. We'll put her back in, but we know that there's expression here. So there, here is the world energy in reverse with the devil energy in the upright. This is coming to terms with something that has long plagued you. This is coming to terms with something that has long had a grip on you in some way. Um, yeah, it's something that long had a grip. This is stepping forward through something. Having even having a conflict against yourself or having a conflict against someone else. Moving away from a conflict, ending it, stepping into it and ending it. And after you do that, this structure is still here. This safety is still here. Your strength is still here. Your beauty is still here. Your value is still here. Your superpowers are still strong. You stand in your own essence and you claim it and you're who you are and you are feeling good about that. And no one can take this away from you now. No one can take this away from you because you have this new realization of who you are and how you're connected to what you believe in and what you have an understanding about. And it all has to do with this judgment energy. So whatever has caused this, 
walking away of something that you once held very tightly to and focused on and still seeing indications of success here and still feeling this framework around you is is actually something that has um, participated in this shift in consciousness. Okay. Quickly, we're going to go into the emperor energy and then I'll move to the extended and see how this energy moves out into the into the future so um let's see i just put back the judgment energy okay let's go into the hermit just really quickly here and see what we can get out of the hermit tell us more about this hermit energy please there's another nine of swords in reverse here that's good i love to see the nine of swords in reverse that's what the hermit can do for you he is logical he is rational kind compassionate and if there's anybody that can help you move through the Knight of Swords, it's the Hermit Energy. Beautiful and well done, Capricorn. Huh, Two of Wands. Fool Energy in reverse. Okay. I can tell you're really going through a change because there are so many reversals. I'm going to go into this fool in reverse just a little bit more. I'm just going to clarify that these are all in the upright. So let's go into the fool a little bit more and see what we have here. Two of swords. Four of Cups. All right, so there's a situation here that you have had been thinking through. Um, I think that there is the, the Fool, see all these energies here kind of, here's the Hermit, but it seems like these energies are kind of congregating here around this. It's, it's like there's two, there, there are some options here on how to do something, what to do, how to do something. It's about doing. It's about taking action. And with the fool in reverse, I just feel like there's a lot of risk here. There's a, there's a lot of vulnerability here. You're not really sure what you should do. Um, there, there are some options here that you're just kind of sitting on because you're not really sure what they contain. You're not really sure the bigger picture of, of this new journey or this new relationship or this new job or, or whatever here that's here lurking around you. There's something new. There's an energy of new that's lurking around you. For some of you, it could feel like it's looming. Depends on how you want to really get in that energy because we do have the Four of Cups here. And I think it's something that you're really wanting to find more information about. You're not sure what to do. You're, you couldn't really not be quite trusting this, the, the options you, there's something here that you might not be trusting because there's, there's some truth here that you, you've either realized because remember that ace of swords, wasn't there an ace of swords? I'm pretty sure there was an ace of swords. Um, here we have two of wands and the two of swords right on top of each other. How does this happen? Here we have the nine of swords in reverse with the three of wands in reverse right on top of each other. Like, how does this happen? Like, those of you that have studied this tool and have been around it, realize how interesting this is, that we have the cards like this. There's something about these options. That that you you needed more information. I think with the hermit you're gaining that information. I think information is coming forward, the truth is coming forward. And you're no longer so worried about it, you're no longer so anxious about it because there was something here that you just felt wouldn't be true 
or it wouldn't be successful or it wouldn't actually come into fruition. Like you had this feeling of doom about it, feeling of, you know, this is too good to be true, or this is a situation that I already know how it's going to go. And I'm not saying that the, that the situation you have is going to be successful or not. I think for everyone here that's listening to this message, you guys already know what this means. Why the Nine of Swords is in reverse with the Three of Wands in reverse. The Hermit is here. So there's now new enlightenment about why you think or why you thought that this was not going to be successful. And it's helping you understand why you were so anxious about it. And now you're not so stressed out. Now you're not so anxious about it because the truth is here. And now that the truth is here, I think that there is a way that you can determine how to take action, right? There's always more than one way. There's always more than one way. You have something here, the full energy, um, that is, uh, maybe there is even an option that's been, been taken away. Maybe this truth has come in and said, you know what? I'm going to eliminate this option. This is an option now that I know the truth that I no longer want. So there could be a process of elimination here for you. How do I take action? Well, let's see all the different ways I can take action and which are the ways that I need to eliminate, which will not work somehow now that I know this truth. So the first step to this is really uncovering all the bits and pieces that have kept you in this anxiety, right? When it was in the upright, there's a reason why you felt like this, right? We don't just feel anxiety for no reason. There's a reason why you felt stressed out. And partly the reason was that you felt like this was just going to be a doomsday situation, that there would be no way that this could be successful. You just didn't have the faith in it. You didn't have the confidence in whatever was being presented to you. And now with this two of swords that has come forward here, um, the, the, the facts or the evidence or the decision that you've made about the truth of this, it gives you the ability to, to kind of now dig into, okay, now that I kind of have a, have a better idea of the situation, what do I do now? How do I act now? And what actions do I take? And I do feel like th this is probably a process of elimination for you digging into these energies, digging into these opportunities and really trying to trying to decide why do you feel so apathetic to them? Why do you feel so hesitant about them? Because there is something here that if it is portrayed in the right way and if the evidence points to success of it, it could be a very exciting journey here, right? Just see the difference with the fool in reverse when we flip it to the upright, how that feels to see the fool. So with the hermit here, it tells me that there are some answers that you're finding. And when the hermit is here, it tells me that you are going to begin to, to step forward in this in some kind of way. Now that you have found the answers, now that you have really thought through this, you can step forward and start to make act to, to take actions in your life. And when we go through something like this, this is inspiring. Remember a big part of the hermit is the teacher within the hermit. So the hermit can teach while he walks. It doesn't have to be a teacher in a formal sense, but it can, this hermit can be a teacher um, in, in how you work, how you walk, the example that you portray in your life. And so with each of you who are resonating with this message, Capricorn, there is a teacher inside of you that is coming alive now as you step forward in this new way. So it's quite beautiful. All right. So that was one of the deepest readings I've done in a long time, Capricorn. Um, it was also one of the most reverent and beautiful readings I've done. So I thank you for allowing me to get into this energy. It, it was a real um, pleasure and honor to do it. I am going to take this energy now and move it into the future to kind of see how this moves along. Um, I'll look at the people who are around you and, and, and get, get into the energies of, of those individuals and then see how their, what their perspective is of your Capricornian energy. Um, that will be in the extended read. I'm, I'm going to move to the extended reading now. My friends, thank you very much for allowing me in. Um, I wish all of you well. Um, stay healthy. Um, stay happy as much as you can in, the, in this 
difficult period of time. And um, I'll see you back um, out here on YouTube in another week or so with another update for, for Capricorn, for the Capricorn people. All right. Thank you very much.